everyone coming in who or who have just joined us. Uh, my name is Inga and I'm the Senior Educational Technologist Content Production for the EdTech Office. And today I'm introducing our two session leaders, Professor Lisa Romke and Professor Robert Irish. Lisa's preferred pronouns are she, her, hers. She is a teaching stream faculty member in ISTEP and engineering science, where she teaches courses in engineering and society and graduate courses in teaching and learning. Her scholarly interests include engineering teaching practices, in particular on the teaching of environmental and social impact, as well as curriculum studies, student development and education research methodology. Lisa serves as Associate Director for the Institute for Studies in Transdisciplinary Engineering Education and Practice, ISTEP, and the Associate Director Curriculum Teaching and Learning in the Division of Engineering Science. Going forward, Lisa will continue to offer certain components of her courses online. Robert's preferred pronouns are he, him, his. He is an Associate Professor Teaching Stream in the ISTEP, Robert coordinates communication in engineering science, where he helps students develop skills in logical, reasoned argument using strong supporting evidence. He also has an interest in helping students develop awareness of ethical decision making. Going forward, Robert will also return to in-person, but will be using the things he learned in the past year. So just as a heads up, the presentation today is called Learning Through Podcasts, so hopefully you are in the right space. And today's session will be recorded and shared after the workshop. So Lisa and Robert, I'll let you take it from here. Thank you. Okay, and I am sharing slides. Please uh, let me know, can you see them? Um, Yes, we can see them. Yeah, you got okay, it. Okay, thank you. I suddenly I lost track of everybody in in the, in the group as soon as I shared, so I can see nothing. Um, but uh, so this is learning through podcast, and we're talking really about the engineering and society course that uh, Lisa and I teach together. Uh, I do want to start with a bit of a disclaimer. Um, so the assignment we're talking about focused on human security, and we will be referencing some things that are um, politically sensitive. And so if you are in a country where there are laws that censor um, sort of what you talk about and what you watch, this may not be the best seminar to be in right now. So um, I would just invite you to, to sign off if, if that uh, accounts for where you are. Um, so uh, not to try and discourage people, uh, maybe it tantalizes you, but uh, we do want just to be sensitive that in some countries the examples we'll be using are actually illegal so just as a warning um we're going to talk a little bit about the engineering and society course that we do together uh, explain why podcasts uh, talk a bit about the structure of the assignment then we're going to get into the good stuff what happened and what we hope to learn and use for the future so just a bit about the course um, we've sort of framed the course around what we call the three crises, so a crisis of sustainability, a crisis of equity, and a crisis of security. And those become the kind of three uh, through lines that we pursue in the course, and we kind of take them one after the other, that logically one actually leads to another. Sustainability causes a problem for equity, which causes a problem for security, so we see this kind of sequentially. And to set students up for that, we uh, frame it with a discussion of um, science and technology studies approaches. So we give them a kind of set of uh, ways into examining these and also, also ethical theories and use that as a way to help students have a guiding set of principles as we move forward. Um, so when we get down to the third crisis and we're starting to talk about security, we try and define it very broadly. We make use of the uh, United Nations definition of security. Uh, we talk about the distinction between freedom from fear and freedom from want. And then we give the students the seven essential domains of human security. So we've set up all of that um, as the kind of background where the course begins. And so that's kind of the context of the teaching in the class. Um, so we then started to ask the question, what could, should we have our students do to explore some aspect of security in greater depth? Um, 
in the course, traditionally, there has been student presentations. As we moved online, we uh, went into a hybrid mode where there was one hour of synchronous lecture and then three 15 minute videos per week, uh, as well as readings. And we reduced the uh, two hour seminar where the students would have discussion to a one hour seminar with half the number of students. So deciding that in the online environment, a, a seminar with 20 was going to lead to a lot of silent students. A seminar of 10 allowed for more significant interaction, even if it was a shorter time. So these were some of the decisions we were making as we were trying to think about this. And so finding time and space for student presentation became awkward, and that led us to begin to think of the podcast. Um, it uh, Going online, led to less time in seminars for discussion. And so we were trying to recoup some of that by in a sense taking the presentation out of the seminar so the discussion could stay. Um, and it became, was difficult to coordinate presentations. We still were looking for student-led content and um, the, we were aware that the TA's time was limited. So we were trying to think strategically there. And then also the modes of communication and how we're going to make it accessible for our students was, were some of the things on our uh, mind. And then we started to think about the opportunities. Um, students can listen on their own and they can do it on their own time and then come together for discussion. This whole idea of you know the traditional talk about a flipped classroom. Well, this is one way of flipping it was to have the presentation outside of class time. Um, and they could do a new kind of collaboration uh, with their peers. And I will confess that we had initially were thinking about this as an individual assignment and was one of the students in a, a pre-course discussion in the summer who said, well, podcasts usually have two or three people. So that changed our, uh, our thinking. Um, and we didn't want to have to resort to something like an essay because we wanted something that actually had an audience. So that was all in our thinking as we were working toward the podcast. Um, later, uh, found some interesting research on podcasts, and one of the affordances of podcasts is that it actually encourages active listeners. So we didn't know that at the time, but it helps to reinforce the decision, and uh, it was nice to have a bit of confirmation that we were doing something in the, in the positive direction. So the basic assignment that we gave the students was to explore and analyze a topic related to a technology concept or reading and viewing from outside the course reading list relevant to the security crisis and encourage your classmates to see the importance of that particular security issue. So there's high level what we were asking them to do. As it gets down into the nitty gritty, we gave them some examples. You could do an interview. You can have an informal conversation between two people. You can have a, have a debate. You can do a review of an article or a book or a video. Um, review a technology that might relate to the domains of security. Um, and then, you know, we were quite open. So it was very open ended all the way through that process. We did have some constraints and some criteria. So we said we want it to be engaging. We want you to do some kind of thoughtful analysis and we want um, coherent uh, and clarity. We want coherence and clarity in, in uh, what you're doing. So all of those things are in our things we're looking for. Um, worth mentioning the constraints because this will come up a little bit. We had them submit it on my media and this actually became quite important because it meant that it wasn't a public release and that became uh, important in terms of protection for our students and also for the university. Um, so we'll talk a bit about the security issues that emerged in running this assignment um, as we as we go. But that gives you a, a sense of the context in which the assignment emerged. Um, and uh, a sense of how it sort of fit quite late in the course as a way of getting the students to do some kind of a presentation and create a basis for discussion. So it then fed into the seminar discussion. So Lisa, I think you're going to talk about this now, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. So we wanted to share uh, with all of you a clip from one of our podcasts, one of our student podcasts. 
So this one uh, focused on the national security law um, in Hong Kong, and it was uh, put together by three of our students, Tristan Robitaille, Sophia Al-Qadiri, and Jai Williams. And you can see from the description here that they each sort of uh, took on uh, a role. Tristan was the host, Sophia was the sociologist, and then uh, Jai was the political ethics expert. And the clip, we're just going to uh, let you listen to um, just a couple of minutes from the podcast, but we, we've we picked a clip that kind of uh, demonstrates, I think, their, their engagement between the three of them and the, the kind of conversation that they had in this podcast. And as you're listening, we just want you to reflect on a question, and Rob, you can just advance that. How does this medium inspire learning? So based on what you've heard so far and based on this clip we're about to share with you, how does this medium, how could this medium, the podcast medium, inspire learning, uh, whether it's in your course or or maybe in, in another class? So I am going to um, share our podcast here. Just give me one moment. Oops, I've shared the wrong thing. Hold on one second. There we go. Let's see. Can you see that, Rob? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, great. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. Hopefully our sound is okay. We're just going to listen to a couple of minutes and then we'll take a few comments from the audience and then we'll move on. Oh, okay. I see. Um, so you, you just mentioned uh, before a new police department and uh, effective constant censorship from the authorities. What does that look like for a typical Hong Kong resident? I'm glad you're asking this. Um, so the police have been given the power to search private property without warrant, freeze assets, intercept communication. They're basically allowed to and often instructed to monitor your every moves and that without ever letting you know. So in response to that, we've seen multiple Western countries that are using their power um, in terms of this global actor network and that are increasing pressure on the Chinese government through economic restrictions and by providing Hong Kongers with asylum. Yeah, I, I see. So it's a real textbook example of the dynamics of internationals. I can understand the dilemma. You know, on one hand, you have to conserve friendly ties, certainly with China. And on the other hand, you have to uphold the values of your citizen as an international leader. Uh, and this new NSL uh, has gotten the whole world discussing international ethics. And uh, which is why Jai uh, is here to discuss this with us. Hey, Jai. Hey, Tristan, thank you for having me. Yeah, so this new national security law has received ethical criticism from much of the Western world. It is as if it wasn't bad enough. Hong Kongers are losing much more than just their freedom of speech. Locals are feeling pressured to switch to more secure social platforms or even deleting them altogether, getting rid of possessions with any kind of pro-democratic interpretation. And they're even experiencing increased desire to leave Hong Kong out of fear of constant surveillance and prosecution. The locals have also been stripped of autonomy in expression, beliefs, education, and even the practice of their own culture. This law is critically infringing on how they conduct their daily lives. Okay, so maybe we'll just pause there for a moment. Um, and I would just invite you, whether you'd like to share a comment or um, a thought uh, using your microphone, or if you want to put it in the chat too, that's great. Um, what kind of learning could this sort of medium uh, inspire in your students or in students in an engineering program or in another program? Certainly these can be used in, in all kinds of different courses. And I'm going to open my chat. And we are going to share our thoughts on the kind of learning it inspired as well. But we just thought this was a neat opportunity to take a pause and, and collect a few thoughts. So feel free to put answers in the chat, or if you'd like to share, you can now use the raise hand function as well. Okay, active learning, constructionism, yeah, absolutely encourages students to use learning from different domains. I think we'll, we'll speak to that a bit in our reflections of the activity. That's a great point, Elias, thank you. Development of oral communication skills in this assignment. Absolutely. You can, you can, as you're probably, <laughs> as you can tell from the subject matter of this podcast and others that we'll share with you in a moment, um, certainly the students didn't um, shy away from tackling some really challenging subjects as well. So just to that point of integrating different domains, you know, it, it's a great opportunity to practice communication, but they're also uh, really digging into some interesting uh, issues here. 
Okay, and it was, and I see there's a question here, We're all voice only. Yes, thanks, Rob, all voice. Okay, I'm going to pull the podcast. Oh, sorry, yeah, Rob, go ahead. I was just going to say that is one of the acknowledged limitations that we'll, we, we want to explore further is exactly that uh, it's auditory. Okay, so I'm going to share uh, once again here. And we just also wanted to uh, share with you the um, just the end piece to this podcast, uh, because the, the student towards the end sort of um, provides kind of a neat link back into the into uh, the in our in class session. So I'm just going to move it to our the right point here. There we go. Thanks for your patience. I'll start it right there. Discussion that this uncertainty, quote unquote, really is a large theme surrounding the national security law. It's very hard to predict what's going to happen next, but this law definitely is a major returning point in Hong Kong's history, or at least Chinese Hong Kong's history. We've seen today how the national security law is yet another curveball for Hong Kongers who really are in an identity crisis right now. Beijing is trying to win them back in a pretty draconian way, and it's definitely turning heads. So I'd like to hear from you, our listeners. As usual, we'll have our live after show tomorrow on Tuesday. So please, if you have anything to share, write to us. Wherever you're from or whatever your interests are, I'm sure your input will be a great addition to the show. Okay, so that's it for me today. Safia, Jai. Thanks so much for being on the show. And to you, our listeners, I'll see you tomorrow. We also really appreciated the addition of the musical intros and <laughs> outros. Um, and uh, you may have, you know, without knowing the course context, obviously you may, maybe wouldn't have caught that, but the live after show on Tuesday was uh, their seminar sessions ran every Tuesday. So the students knew they were, uh, their classmates were listening to their podcast and then they were going into their seminar on Tuesday to discuss. So that was the, that was sort of the little inside bit there. So Rob, I think you are going to share slides again. I am, <laughs> except that Teams keeps putting notifications up in front of the, the share button. So, <laughs> Rob and I are both Zoomers. We're not actual Zoomers, but Zoomer, Zoomer in the software sense. <laughs> and uh, so we're still getting used to Teams here. <laughs> Thank you. So we can uh, go ahead, I think, Rob, to the next slide. So just to share with you the breadth of examples, as Rob said, we, we use the United Nations uh, definition of sec human security, which is quite broad. And so this invited a number of different topics. Um, we did encourage the students, you know, to think about topics that um, integrated, um, you know, technology specifically uh, to kind of increase the relevance for their fellow students and to encourage them to think about the roles that engineers play in reinforcing or sometimes in undermining human security. But just to give you a sense of the um, the the different topics, and you know, for some students. I think it became about exploring a topic of interest or something that they didn't know a lot about. For some of them, it was an opportunity to reflect on something in their home country or an issue that's impacted them personally. Uh, so it was a, you know, just really interesting to see the breadth of, um, of podcast uh, topics and of course made it very interesting for the students as well who are listening. So next slide. We want to share just a, a little bit in terms of our observations of learning outcomes from this activity. And as Rob mentioned, there are there is a little bit of literature on using podcasts as an educational artifact or activity. Um, certainly, um, there is some evidence to suggest a link to motivation, and we all know there's a strong relationship between motivation and learning but also increasing rapport between teacher and students. And we felt that that was particularly important this year um, in a year where we felt that our community was, um, you know, a little bit different. And so an opportunity to connect in a new way was, I think, really valuable for us as a course, course instructors and our course team, as well as uh, for the students. So next slide, just to get into a few more specifics. Um, and these are, you know, based on our observations and our discussion with the students and our discussion with our teaching staff, um, there was a lot of value for the students in creating a learning object as a learning activity. I think for, for you know, for all of us, and I think probably everybody in this session is an instructor in some way, whether you instruct in a formal classroom or in other ways, 
we all know that you know one of the best ways to learn something is is to teach it or to frame it in a way that will help other people learn and appreciate the subject matter. And so that 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 exercise of framing and scoping and and thinking about you know what can I do in a ten minute podcast to help my peers understand this as as a human security issue was really valuable from a learning perspective. It gave them a chance to collaborate in a way that they hadn't um, hadn't before. So our students had collaborated on design projects and in other uh, course projects, laboratories, but this is a very different medium. And so I think it kind of flex those collaboration muscles in a new way. As Rob said, there is there is some evidence to indicate, and certainly, you know, I think we saw evidence of this informally in our seminars. Um, this is a good way to hone active listening skills. So if you're listening to a conversation between people, um, it's just an, it's another way to to practice those skills, to reflect on how people are engaged in conversation and what evidence of active listening you uh, can pick up from the podcast itself, from the two or three students interacting in a podcast. So certainly active listening, I think, is an interesting learning outcome. Empathy and care. And I'm going to talk about a specific example of that in a moment. Um, but I think there's there's something to be said for listening to your classmates talk about an issue that they really care about. And you're hearing them, you're hearing their voice. It's not something on paper. You're hearing them talk. You're hearing them engaged. Um, that uh, certainly uh, uh, helps with empathy. Then we have uh, giving the voice to our students. So giving them an opportunity to talk about an issue that matters. <laughs> and I have a, a guest speaker here <laughs> to go off camera for one second. So <laughs> special guest, you didn't know you were getting a special guest, did you? <laughs> so giving voice to our students around an issue that, that matters, um, I think was really, really valuable experience to them for them to feel they had the opportunity to share it in a new way. Increased engagement in seminars. So something that all of our teaching uh, assistants said was that, you know, the seminars, we took a couple of seminars at the end of the course. And that's where we conversation with the podcast. And the, just the engagement was so strong in the seminars. It went through the roof. And how is it what we're doing maybe a little bit next year? And Are others losing Lisa? I've just lost Lisa. And I'm I'm hoping you can still hear me. Oh, you're back. I'm, I'm back. Sorry. All kinds of all kinds of problems on my end. Um, but it's yeah, it's a learning object that it has some flexibility to it. And Rob, maybe we can go on to the instructor or the course staff. Yes. It's an engaging assessment experience for our uh, for our uh, course staff. It's also um, offers them an alternative assessment format to kind of show what you know. And then, as we said, builds community, a new connection between staff and students, allows the staff to get to know the students in a new way. OK, next slide. How do you want you to come down? OK, I'll be down in a few minutes, OK? <laughs> Sorry, everyone. <laughs> this is the first time I've been interrupted all day. I'll be down in a few minutes, OK? I think there's some Mother's Day surprises going on. OK, oh, maybe not. OK, <laughs> so we have um, we wanted to share the story of one of our podcasts um, today. Uh, and that was uh, this is a podcast about um, the Uyghur crisis. Uh, and Rob, you can advance the animation there. I just want to highlight that this is a sort of an opportunity we saw as an opportunity and some evidence of um, um, the development of empathy, and I'll, I'll speak to sort of why we saw this and what and what we saw. So this was a really interesting example of a of a very politically sensitive um, uh, human security issue, and because our students, we had about 20 25 percent of our students were learning out from outside of the country, so we did need to um, look really. Um, carefully at the, the topics that the students wanted to explore and in some in some cases put some accommodations in place that allowed them to explore a topic of interest but did not create a security uh, concern for anybody in the class and this particular example was uh, two students who worked together um, a Muslim student from Egypt and then a student from China who was learning in Canada at the time but had moved from China relatively recently and they opted to focus on political security uh, through an examination of the Uyghur crisis and compared perspectives between the Chinese government and Western media and also did a bit of an analysis of the technologies like facial recognition technology, for example, that play some kind of a role in, in the crisis. 
And so in this particular case, we were not able, and this was the case actually for a few of our podcasts, we were not able to run it in um, the typical format that we ran all the other uh, others in because we needed to be mindful of where our learners were, were learning from. And so we um, set up a special seminar for this, um, being mindful of um, the students who were invited to attend. Um, and we also had to conceal the identity of the Chinese student. And this was after a consultation with um, the university and information security. And uh, we went through a very rigorous process to ensure that we could allow the students to engage in the learning activity that they wanted to without compromising anybody's safety or security. So, you know, that in and of itself was very interesting. But then we had to explain this to the students who were attending this seminar to discuss this podcast. And we played the podcast in real time. We never released the podcast. Um, to see their reactions in listening to this case, but also to hear from their classmate who was concealing their identity and you know, observing the students and talking to them after it was it really drove home for us the opportunity. And I mean, this was a particular kind of unique example, but the opportunity overall of increasing understanding and empathy um, and awareness of global issues through this kind of activity, where, again, you're hearing the voices of students who are impacted by these issues. It, it was really powerful and um, I think just demonstrated to us how much potential this kind of medium um, and modality has. So we can go to the next slide, I think. Um, turning to something very nuts and bolts ask, <laughs> we did want to just share and we're not going to speak this. I know we're running short on time. We're not going to speak to this in great detail, but one of the big um, um, uh, sort of big activities that we had to do here um, was create a rubric and we didn't find a lot of um, examples to draw from. So this was a really kind of interesting um, uh activity for us to do working through the development of a rubric it's certainly not perfect um, but if anybody is interested in receiving it we're happy happy to share it's probably something we will refine for next year trying to find sort of the right ways to assess students on things like engagement on framing for this particular medium on the engagement with their partner or with their two their two partners in in the podcast so lots of sort of interesting bits here around uh, determining the best things to include in a rubric um, and as I said, we're happy to share. And next slide. So a few challenges and tensions. Um, as you can see, <laughs> we kind of created our own security crisis. And again, I want to acknowledge actually the, the university um, and our information security office who were just enormously helpful. And, you know, it, it just became a really important goal for us to do everything we could to allow the students to engage in the learning they wanted to learn, but to do it in a safe way. Um, and it, it was a really interesting example of the kinds of things that the university has to be aware of when you're, you know, when you have a, a global sort of a, a population of students learning from all over the globe. Um, so it was interesting for us in the course more broadly and certainly in this context. I also want to just note something about the role of role play. We had some really interesting role play examples, but we also had some problematic role play examples. And you know, it, it's one of those, I think, areas where you want to give students the freedom and flexibility um, to really try to put themselves in the shoes and the situation of another group or another person. But sometimes that's not appropriate. And I think that's something that, you know, we'd be interested in, in giving the students a bit more guidance on and how do you present this kind of a uh, learning object and how do you really showcase the experience of another person without making it seem trivial um, or problematic. And Rob, maybe I'll throw it to you for that last point there, because I know you had some specifics. Yes, yeah, so the last one was just that, that we recognize that sometimes um, the auditory medium is not the best way to represent something or to explain something, and the there's a value in visual. And there's sometimes concern around the retention of what you hear in an in a or oral fashion, like how much are you going to retain of our seminar today? Um, so we, we just want to acknowledge the limitations that are also part of doing this way. And and uh, one of the questions in the chat earlier was about video casts as well. Um, we wanted to actually constrain to the audio for the reason of accessibility and uh, you know technology requirements. We knew that our students could make an audio that was shared. 
uh, through something even as simple as a Teams call or a Zoom call that you record. So we wanted to limit the technological requirements that, that came with that. So that was one of the challenges that came with it. And just to get at the last uh, next steps, um, one of the things we realized is that this came very late. And it was really in the last uh, two or three se seminars that the students were sharing these video these um, podcasts. Now, now I'm saying videos. They were sharing these podcasts and they were uh, talking about them in their groups. And we realized there was a real opportunity to create greater collegiality, greater bonding between the students, probably increase the engagement if we uh, spread this across the semester. So we're thinking about how can we balance this and maybe have some students doing each of the three crises. So um, we haven't figured that out yet because there's logistical issues as, as that as, as you try and do that kind of thing. We also thought about, um, I mean, we were just so impressed by the students' work. We thought another thing we might want to explore is a podcast playlist for a broader audience. So we have a weekly newsletter that goes out to our students every week put a podcast in sort of once a week to share with students in other years, um, just because the work was so, so interesting. And, you know, we were so impressed with the with the students and the quality of the podcasts. And then finally, you know, I think we're, we're interested in sort of more rig rigorously examining the development of empathy and understanding. And I, and I don't want to give the sense, I mean, especially when we, we look at things like the Uyghur crisis, I don't want to give the impression that I think that, you know, a 10 minute podcast and a 30 minute conversation develops the you know level of understanding and empathy that we would like it to but you know just based on our our kind of observations of the students and the follow-up conversations it, it seemed like there's an opportunity to kind of examine this and we know as well that you know there's our, our emotional and our cognitive uh, intelligence share a number of neural systems and so as students care more about something they'll learn they'll learn more about something and it also helps to reinforce kind of the underlying theoretical, I guess, foundation of what human security means. So I think there's lots of opportunity there to explore a little bit more around empathy development and learning development and how these kinds of learning objects can play a role. We went two minutes over. I'm sorry. And my my special guest didn't help. That's okay. Um, <laughs> there's nothing they're talking about a really serious topic and then having your child walk in the room. Oh, and someone's back. But thank you. And, and thanks for your patience, everyone. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Well, there was one question that came up. If you wanted to address that, um, we I just wanted to be just noticing the time that we have our last session starting at three, but there was one question that came up that said, did you have students generate transcripts for the podcasts? Useful accessibility angle there. I don't remember. Um, I'm did also, we? I'm also trying to remember if we had them do that or not. That This is awful. Um, we did transcripts for everything else in the class. I can't recall if we did. Yeah, thanks, Allison. I don't know that we did, but it's an it, we absolutely should, and uh, and that's something that's certainly feasible and manageable with the with the you know the systems that we use. So it's a great suggestion. Well, just just pulling up the Tristan show, I see that the transcript button is not available, so that would suggest that they didn't have one. So we probably didn't require it. Um, but it is something that we should do in terms of accessibility. So good question. Uh, yeah, the podcast was supposed to be 10 minutes as a maximum. So uh, that was that was what we were working with. Uh, this class had how many do we have? 200 and 240 ish. 240 yeah. something. Yeah. So. So and, and so they are in uh, seminar groups of uh, 10 to 12. Um, so it was it was within that context. It was the the podcast would be shared with the others in that seminar, and they would be teamed with one or two others, if, depending on even and odd numbers, uh, in that seminar. So um, that was sort of how the structure worked. Thank you. Oh, Inga, you're on, you're muted. Never have I ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Lisa and Robert, uh, for that. That was, I loved it especially. Um, just a reminder, everyone, as we leave the session that we do have uh, just a short break, 10 minute break before the final session block of the day, starting at three. Uh, so thank you again. And uh, 
maybe see you at the next one.